Hi everyone, okay so I just got a sudden wave of inspiration to talk a little bit about Bond again. Uh, specifically in relation to uh, Pierce Brosnan. Obviously I've got a lot of love for Pierce Brosnan, you know, as Bond and also just as an actor in general. I, I mean I love Goldeneye, I love Tomorrow Never Dies. But some of the other stuff he's done over the years, you know, obviously... Thomas Crown Affair, certainly. Evelyn um, is another one. And then a lot of the stuff from the post-Bond era as well. You know, stuff like Seraphim Falls, Butterfly on a Wheel. And then November Man, Love is All You Need and uh, The Foreigner. And of course it was great seeing him in Black Adam as Dr. Fate. But obviously, you know, it would have. it's interesting to think about what could have been if... Pierce Brosnan had, had done a fifth Bond movie because obviously he did die another day and then following that he was, you know, negotiating with the Broccolis um, for a potential fifth outing and ultimately it didn't come to fruition which I think is a great shame but it's just so fascinating to think about what could have been because my thing with Pierce Brosnan, um, obviously, you know, Goldeneye was fantastic. But in the following films, just the writing obviously wasn't where it needed to be. I mean, I, as I say, I love Tomorrow Never Dies, but ultimately that's a schlocky 90s, late 90s B-movie. Obviously, while I love it, you would... You want something more than that when you think of the great Bond films. So there was obviously the problem with the writing, but also in relation to Pierce himself, because obviously Pierce was always, he had that very youthful look about him. I mean, obviously still, you know, he still looks great. He aging gracefully, but, and also, you know, he's always looked like a model, you know, being very... He's always had that sort of look, so he fits the bill, of course, you know, you know, always looks immaculate, and he fits perfectly into these wonderful and exotic locations, and of course, in the context of him whining and dining, all of these beautiful women, you have no trouble buying that at all, but one of the things that I felt that really uh, went against Pierce is when it came to the fight scenes and the action stuff because given like given that look that he had you didn't always buy him in the action stuff although I will always maintain the fight that he has with Sean Bean at the end of GoldenEye is still one of the best fight sequences we've had in the Bond franchise but obviously that kind of exists in isolation. You know, when you look at the broader scope and look at, like, in general, at his action throughout his Bond films, it's not always been particularly strong. What is interesting, though, as he's gotten older and he's kind of gotten a bit of, like, gri you know, a bit more grizzled with age, you know, he's look and he's become more... I think more believable as a badass and with action stuff like obviously in 2014 when he did the November Man he, you know he, he was much more believable I felt and also playing he, he was able to bring a harder edge to it as well you know pulling off like that darker um, darker character and obviously you think in relation to Bond you know Basically, the character that he plays in the in the November Man has a lot in common with like a Timothy Dalton sort of Bond. So it would have been interesting to see because I think Pierce has talked about wanting to take his portrayal of Bond down a darker avenue. That would have been fascinating to see, and obviously, if he'd been able to portray, uh, portray the character for that, you know like in a fifth movie and possibly one or two more movies afterwards, you know, as he's getting that bit older and that bit more grizzled, it would have been really fascinating, um, fascinating to see what that would have looked like. I think 
we did get glimpses. We did get glimpses in the world is not enough because his his portrayal and that is very very serious in that one. It's that might be his darkest portrayal if you look at all his four Bond movies. And obviously they're getting the first half of Die Another Day, you know, with him being taken prisoner in Korea and then obviously cast out of the CIA. So oh boy, cast out of MI six. It's 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 serious stuff. And obviously, going with that darker portrayal of the character, that obviously that all goes hand in hand. So it would have been interesting as he got older and got that bit of gruffness to him, you know, to see what that would have looked like. And I was wanting a branch, well, it kind of fits organically when we're talking about that hypothetical fifth movie, because obviously... Pierce Brosnan had brought a pitch, as we've heard in the past, uh, that was going to have Quentin Tarantino at the helm. Obviously, Tarantino had talked with Pierce about doing a Bond movie, and Tarantino's talked about the Bond film that he would have made in various interviews, like he talked about it on Jonathan Ross, and there's been like interviews with various news outlets where he's talked a bit about it, that Tarantino wanted to do Casino Royale, and he wanted to do it with Pierce Brosnan. And it, what would what would have been fascinating is it wouldn't have necessarily been a direct uh, adaptation because he would have played it uh, from what he said in various interviews. He was going to play around a little bit with the timeline because he what he was going to do he was going to take Casino Royale and he was going to put it back in the past. So this wouldn't have necessarily followed on from Die Another Day, not at all. This was actually going to be set, according to Tarantino, after On a Majesty's Secret Service. So we're talking like maybe late 1969, possibly early 1970. So the idea would have been, this would have been, rather than Casino Royale being about Bond's first mission as a double O, this would have been his first mission back in the field following the death of his wife at the end of On a Majesty's Secret Service. And it just would have been fascinating to see what that would have looked like. I think it would have given Pierce some great material to play with. And that whole thing of, obviously, this is a man who suffered tremendous loss. And, obviously, if we were going to tie it into Spectre, like they could have done something with the Lashif character, you know, if it's revealed that Lashif has ties to Spectre... And if Bond sat there on the opposite side of the card table looking at him and he's thinking, this guy knows where Blofeld is. And then we've got that interesting balancing act that Bond has to, has to carry out of, look, I'm on a mission here and I've got to keep level-headed because I've got to, I've got to make sure I win this card game. And obviously, because, you know... The stakes is obviously if I lose all this money that you know I'm finan you know I'm financing you know terrorism global terrorism it's going right into po Spectre's pocket, so I got to keep this level headed. But when all this is over, one way or another, this guy's going to tell me what I want to know. So it would it would have been fascinating to see that interplay between obviously you know the recently widowed Bond. And he sat opposite from a guy who's connected to the guy who made Bond a widow in the first place. Oh, I should oh, I should say widower. Everybody calm down. Um Yeah, that would have been fascinating. Um and also one of the things as well you've got to keep in mind at overseeing all of this is Quentin Tarantino. So obviously with Quentin Tarantino's wonderful direction and his gift for dialogue, you could only just you could only imagine what the interplay would have been like and the casting. Oh boy, the casting would have been incredible, I'm sure. It would have been amazing to see who he would have got to play Le Chief. I mean, I'm just thinking this would have been around like you know, the mid, like, 2000s, like, should we say ballpark 2004, 2006? So, 
I'm just thinking, because obviously the natural, you think of who you could have got to Lashie, for Lashif, and obviously Mads Mikkelsen was perfect, but if we rule him out just for the sake of the sake, and you think obviously Christoph Waltz, you know, the first time he worked with Tarantino was 2009, but if Christoph Waltz was already on Tarantino's radar, which knowing Tarantino, he already would have been, because Tarantino just knows everything there is to know and knows everyone there is to know. You know, imagine Christoph Waltz as Le Chiffre. Or, indeed, if we actually got to see Blofeld at the end of all of this, Christoph Waltz coming in then as Blofeld, and I'm sure the character of Blofeld would have been handled, would have been handled with much more care and attention under Tarantino's watch. Uh, but, you know, it's just, it's fascinating to imagine what it all would have looked like. You know, obviously, Pierce in that late 60s, early 70s setting, playing with this interesting material of the being you know, all recently losing his wife and obviously going back out in the field on mission for the first time. And just, and I know in some interviews, Tarantino was thinking about doing the whole thing in black and white as well that would have been incredible uh, but it's just uh, it's just what could have been i mean there's part of me that still hopes eventually brosnan might just get a sudden wave of inspiration to do his own never say never again and if he got tarantino to do it right and direct it that would be a thing of beauty obviously probably never happened i mean Brosnan's past it at this point, you know, he's he's past it he, he, in the sense that he's made peace with it, he doesn't need Bond anymore, he's on other things, he doesn't, he, you know, obviously he's always, you know, he's always proud of Goldeneye and obviously what that's enabled him to do, you know, he off the back of his success as Bond he was able to create his own... Um, production company Irish Dreamtime and obviously done stuff like Thomas Crown and Evelyn and November Man was Irish Dreamtime as well so you know, Brosnan doesn't need it but it would just be again if he ever ha if he ever got the inspiration I'd be there with bells on to see it and that's one thing as well before Tarantino's done I mean he keeps saying that his la his next film will be his last Again, he's too much of a creative force for that to be true, unless he goes off and starts doing series and mini series stuff like that. I would love to see at some point Tarantino work with Pierce Brosnan, and wouldn't it be the most perfect thing if Tarantino did a spy thing? So it's Bond, but it's not Bond. That would be the next best thing. Anyway, that just pretty much wraps this up. I just got this sudden wave of inspiration to talk about because I would have loved to have seen that. I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, obviously Daniel Craig's never been my Bond and I'm not really a fan of Casino Royale, although a lot of people love it. For a lot of people, Casino Royale's the best Bond film ever made and say what you will, Casino Royale made a lot of money, so it all worked out pretty well in the end, but it's just fascinating to... A fascinating thought experiment to think about what could have been. I mean, I've talked about these hypotheticals, like, I would love to see an alternative universe where, obviously, Pierce Brosnan did Casino Royale with Tarantino, and I would have loved to have seen an alternative universe where Timothy Dalton came back and did Goldeneye. And I've even gone out on a limb and said, I would have been fascinated to have seen... What would have happened if George Lazenby had have stayed on as Bond? Because obviously, you know, getting more experience as an actor and becoming more comfortable in the role, it he could have gone on and done great things. I mean, we might not have gotten Roger Moore as Bond, but the upshot of that is we might have got that second season of The Persuaders that we never got. So that it would have all worked out just fine. But it just it's really interesting to consider these different hypotheticals. And I hope you've enjoyed this, again, this word salad that I've just spewed out for about 15 minutes. But thank you for indul your indulgence. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.